Hello, welcome to Algebra 1. So if you see on the top right there, it says Lesson 73. We're going to go ahead and open our books to that lesson. It's 481. If you have any questions, always make sure you email me down there. Send me a message through Facebook, Instagram, etc., whatever. If you live in the area and you really need the help, I don't mind helping you. We are here till about 3 or 4 o'clock. So I can help you. I can tutor you. Anything you need. We are there to help you out. Again, do not use this time to play video games, to uh, catch up on your Netflix show. Use this time, especially in the morning, just use it for school, and then the rest you can do, you know, anything you need to do. Here we have uh, compound inequalities. There are two types. I call them the ands and the ors. The ands, that means it's combined, it's between whenever you're graphing it. So here we have x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So numbers that are greater than negative 3 or equal, is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. So if you look at the number line here, so numbers are greater than or equal to negative 3, so negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and it's going this direction. But at the same time, x is greater than 3, and it's less than 5. So less than means a number less than 5. Number that's less than 5 is 5. Sorry, less than or equal to 5, so it's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, etc. So if you look at the number line, it starts at 5, and it descends. So four, three, two, one. Whenever you're dealing with inequalities, that means X is not one answer anymore. X is a range of different answers. So here to graph it, I usually use this. So less than or equal to X, less than or equal to. If these are your main numbers, the signs will never change to the other direction. It's always going to stay less than. But you're, what you're filling out for ands is filling out the lowest point here, your minimum point, and then your maximum point out here. So here, your minimum point was negative 3. Your maximum point is 5 because x is between negative 3 and negative 5. Always look at the definitions of each one. x is greater than or equal to 3. So you think of on yourself what number is greater than or equal to 3. Or negative 3, I'm sorry. Here, we have x is less than or equal to negative 3 or x is greater than or equal to 5. That means x is two different things, but there's a different range. So it's not just x is 5, x is 7. x could be this or x could be that, but x cannot be anything between those numbers. So here to graph it, x is less than negative 3. You have your negative 3. Keep in mind for if there is a line underneath, you have closed circles. If you have no lines underneath, there are open circles. They're called open intervals, closed intervals. We'll just deal with circles for now. Here we have x is less than or equal to negative 3. We have our negative 3 mole. Uh, mark right here. It's a line, so it's a closed interval. The arrow, less than, is facing this way. So that means you're going to draw it in the direction of the arrow, but also read it, x is less than or equal to negative 3. Numbers are less than or equal to negative 3 is negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 100, negative 1,000, and so on and so on. Here it says, or x is greater than or equal to 5. So that means x is greater than 5, or it could be equal to 5. So it could be 5, but it could be a number greater than 5, meaning 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and so on. So when you're drawing arrows, for the first one, you draw a negative 3. It's a closed interval. Your arrows are facing to the left. You're going to draw it this direction, but also you're drawing to where the numbers are getting less than negative 3. Here is your next mark, or meaning there's going to be a gap. So always think of there's going to be a gap, and that gap is between the two numbers. X is greater than or equal to 5. That means X could be 5 or X could be 6. X could be 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And that's why I'm drawing it to the right here. So I'm drawing this to the left, to the right. You're always going to end up with a graph that looks something like this. Nothing else. It's not going to be one arrow here, one arrow here. They're both going to face opposite direction. And for ants, they're going to face, they're going to be a range of numbers. Now, let's do example one. All real numbers. There you go. All real numbers are greater than one and less than four. So all real numbers are greater than one. So all real numbers, labeled as X. Greater than is that symbol right there. Remember, less than is a slanted L. This is not a slanted L because it's greater than, so it's opposite arrow. Is greater than one and, so I'm putting the word and, less than four. So again, we're dealing with greater numbers, so x is greater than 1, so we have x is greater than 1 right here, and 
all real numbers is less than, that's your slanted L, 4. So x is greater than 1 and is less than 4. I normally don't like it how it's written here. I like to have the smaller numbers first and the bigger numbers second. So if I were to rearrange this, I would have, oh, actually it doesn't matter for the ands. But it would matter for the ors. For here for the ands, you have x is greater than 1 and x is less than 4. When you're dealing with and, it's a compound inequality. That means it's going to be one whole inequality. It's not going to be two separate ones like or. And is one inequality. So you have your symbol here. There was no line underneath. They didn't say greater than or equal to. That's why you don't have the line underneath. But it says x is greater than 1. So that means you're going to have your two symbols. They're always less than. It's always going to be these two symbols here. So two symbols here and x. This is going to be your minimum point, and that's going to be your maximum point. Minimum point means a smaller number. Here it says x is greater than 1, but it's less than 4. So that means x is greater than 1, and it's less than 4. x is greater than 1, that means it could be 2, it could be 3. x is less than 4, that means it could be 3, it could be 2, it could be 1. So here, there's only a certain range here. So that means it's the x is between 1 and 4. So that's why I have my open intervals. There's no line underneath. They don't tell us greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. And you have your open intervals and you're filling in between the two lines. Next one. All real numbers are greater than 9. All real numbers are greater than 9. Or, make it smaller. Or less than 3. So less than, what do you mean less than? X. They're always referring to the beginning, which is all real numbers. So all real numbers is less than 3. So greater than 9, x is greater than 9. That means x could be... Numbers are, x is greater than 9, and then it's less than 3. Okay, so I was thinking about and inequality. So it's greater than 9, and it's less than 3. So if I have greater than 9... Again, I like to have the smaller numbers on one side, the bigger number on the other side. So I'm just gonna crisscross it. I'm just gonna put it here. You don't really have to do this. The book doesn't do it. It's just when you see in higher math, it's just easier to look at. So I'm just gonna move this one first because three is smaller. X is bigger, just according to the number line. It's easier to graph like that. So X is less than three. So that means you have your open interval at three. Less than, that means a number less than three. Numbers are less than three is two, one, zero. That means you're going to draw your arrow in the left direction. Or, so X could be this. So a range here, this arrow means it could be anything after these numbers. Or X could be greater than nine. So you have your nine, that's your starting point. It's uh, open interval. And x is greater than 9, so numbers that are greater than 9 is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that means you're drawing your arrow in that direction. Again, you don't have to flip it. I just prefer flipping it. It's easier to see on the number line. Example 4, it's solving for these. These are actually very easy. If you look at the other videos on Khan Academy, they had um, just like the basic. But here, the, I will consider this two-step equations, meaning you're less than or... Your greater than symbol, you're gonna treat it just like an equation with the equal sign. So you solve it the same exact way. You need to get x by itself. So here, 4x plus 3 is less than negative 5. x is not by itself. First thing you do, you have your left side, you have your right side. To get the x by itself, you subtract both sides by the opposite number. So it's positive 3, I'm gonna subtract both sides by 3. 4x is less than negative 5 minus 3, which is negative 8. To get the x by itself, 4 times x, the opposite operation of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. I get x is less than negative 2. Keep in mind, it's or. So there's two different equations at the same time. Sorry. Two different equations at the same time. So x is less than negative 2 or... And then we have to solve for this one. So we have the first one here, but remember, or it's a compound inequality. There is one thing going on. It's the ands or it's the ors. It's not just a single one anymore. Here, again, we have to get x by itself. To get x by itself, we subtract both sides by 7. We have negative 2x is less than negative 1. And then to get x by itself, 
sorry, I got a couple messages going on.